Hello, my name is Tuli Nabo Riviri. Today I'll be covering the 1910s to 1930s. I'll be talking about World War I and the Roaring Twenties. Based on compilation of footage, World War I, women, women ammunition workers, 1910s, women workers were traditionally fully covered from neck to ankles and wrist. It was not uncommon for all women to wear long hair in ponytails at workplace. They were fully clothed in ammunition factories, streets, and other public places. In rowing twenties that lasted until the 1930s, women dressed more sexually liberated, called the flappers, a word originating from the United Kingdom. Flappers were portrayed riding motorcycles and dancing in swimsuits smoking while dressed in sleeveless above and knee-high skirts, and were also seen in bars dressed as flappers. While dancing at the company of men present at bars, this period covered the 19th century during the early 1910s to the 21st century during the roaring 20s. Flappers rebelled against the tradition of their parents who had no voting rights. With voting rights under the 19th Amendment during President Wilson. In summary, during World War I in the 1910s, women had to conform with dress codes and behaviors of their parents, whereas during the Roaring Twenties, flappers had guaranteed rights under the 19th Amendment. Good morning, my name is Eduardo Calderon, and I'm going to be talking the period of the 1940s, 50s, and it's regarding to the McCarthy time, which was a very big issue with the communist part. So, but during the 40s, were not promising for the American film industry, especially following the 1941 attack to Pearl Harbor by the Japanese and the result, and this result in the loss of foreign markets for Hollywood. The Hollywood film production became profitable during the years 1943 to 1946, thanks to the incorporation of sound to the film production. The technical challenges of the early 30s sound era were far behind. Senator McCarthy has been the worst stain on both Wisconsin politics and the Republican Party National. Party National. And uh, McCarthy achieved this distinction by getting an entire shameful era in the U.S. politics, McCarthy era, which was named after him. McCarthy turned the 50s into a reckless and anti-communist witch hunt as Wisconsin Republican senator made widely irresponsible and damaging and truthful accusations about communism subverting the U.S. government. McCarthy was referring to the moderate Eisenhower administration, our military, our military, schools, and the entertainment industry. Victims included hundreds jailed for refusing to testify before the House on American Activities Committee, HUAC, about their personal politics ideals and their association and associates. Tens of thousands more were fired or black listed as actors, screenwriters, playwrights, government employees, educators, and military professionals. These decisions were based on widespread rumors that they held left or center politics beliefs. So this decade was a change in female characters by challenging the gender norms. The actresses had more acting roles than standing by a man, looking pretty, or serving the man. Women were also shown in films to be leaders and were portrayed as intelligent and classy women. During the 1960s, women were able to get leading roles in cinema. For example, Elizabeth Taylor. In 1963, she received the leading role in the movie Cleopatra. She was given the role of a female leader of one of the greatest em empresses of Egypt. Elizabeth Taylor was the highest paid performer in history of Hollywood, earning $1 million for the movie. Another famous actress was Audrey Hepburn. She was known for her beauty and in famous roles such as Breakfast at Tiffany's and My Fair Lady. Breakfast at Tiffany's was about a woman who stand out as an independent woman. She did not like to belong to a man. 
Her character loved her independence and was one of the first to support the idea of women as independent. My Fair Lady was about a woman who transformed from a working class girl to a high class woman. The film supported women to believe that they did not belong to a certain social class. Another inspirational woman who did both Broadway and film was Barbara Streisand. She got her famous role in the movie Funny Girl. Women also appeared and filmed through their writing. Harper Lee won the Pulitzer Prize with her famous book To Kill a Mockingbird. In 1962, her book was turned into a film. For research on the 2000s, I interviewed Kimberly McKean, an acting professor at UTEP. Kim has done some acting for commercials and TV shows, and she now teaches an acting for the camera class here at UTEP. The interview was centered around the changes and obstacles women have seen while working in the film in this decade. In your opinion, what is the biggest change that has happened since women started acting in film to now? I mean, I think the, the progress is slow for, for representation, like I, I was just talking about, slow, but um, things are changing, I guess especially in terms of support amongst other women. I don't know if it, um, how it was, like, 30, 40 years ago, but now um, women are sort of coming together collectively and saying, let's do something about this, let's change it, let's, let's not be painted into this box. And um, that women are empowering each other and encouraging each other to have a voice and to speak up and to say something if they're not being, being treated right on set. And I think right now we're just sort of right at this huge, huge paradigm shift where if enough women say something, if enough women stand up and say, you know what, this is a male-dominated industry, but we're going to change that, then um, hopefully something will change. And I think that before, it was sort of like, well, we'll just be quiet and accept it because we need the job. And I think that that's probably no longer, which is, which is a great thing.